Good afternoon, Sergeant Howie. I trust the sight of the young people refreshes you. No, sir. It does not refresh me. Oh, I'm sorry. One should always be open to the regenerative influences. Well, it, it wasn't uh, only after all this time, because when, uh, after the film uh, re received this rather disgraceful treatment, I went back to the United, United States, where I had been working before. I mean, in spite of the fact that I don't sound very American, I am more American than the British. Um, uh, so uh, once I was there, I had the chance to get hold of the film and restore it and distribute it. I say I had the chance, I had a lot of people to help me. Um, and uh, uh, one group, or who were all of the people in the media industry, we see had seen this amazing magazine and heard that this film was great and it was being sort of buried. And so there was a lot of help to be had. And the American universities, all of which have media departments, there's one down uh, called Tulane University in New Orleans, uh, and that pro the professor there gave his students the task, I mean, it was purely academic, of course, at the time, of designing a campaign to get hold of this film, finance it, and distribute it. And maybe slightly to his surprise, that's exactly what the students did. So I acted only, of course, as the director in, you know, involved with the the way the film had been cut and the way I thought it should be restored. From that point of view, they left it entirely to me, but they did all, everything else. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello again. Are you the landlord here? I. I'm Alda McGregor. And you must be the policeman from the mainland. Well, in order to make this shorter version for a, um, a you know, two-film uh, rollout, uh, well, they had to take about five minutes out. And they took it mainly out, out of the first um, night at which um, the sergeant spends in the inn. Um, and by doing so, of course, they took out any sight of Christopher Lee and his, and his character until two thirds of the way through the film, when he, when Howie meets him again in his in his castle, um, the other thing that they did was they you didn't understand what the how can I say almost religious power that that uh, Christopher had, because by presenting the young man as a sort of uh, if he was a young Jew a, a bar mitzvah <laughs> with with the sort of resident love goddess, um, he obviously established himself as a very powerful but, you know, uh, curious uh, role person uh, to the audience. You don't get any idea of that until two-thirds of the way through the film. Um, so it was a huge loss to the plot and to the atmosphere of the film. Also lost a very beautiful song, which was part of the atmosphere, really, which is Gently Johnny, which is based on a lyric by Robbie Burns, the Scottish poet, uh, with a uh, very beautiful uh, melody by Paul Giovanni, Paul Giovanni our, our composer. <laughs> they do love their divinity lessons. But they, they are... Are naked. Naturally, it's much too dangerous to jump through the fire with your clothes on. W what religion can, can, can they possibly be learning? J jumping over bonfires. Parthenogenesis. What? Well, I'm not, actually, because I had the privilege of going around the United States uh, with it and seeing it, you know, probably a hundred times in cinemas with audiences. Uh, which is a wonderful thing for a director to do, actually, because you know, you you heard where they when they laughed, and you intended them to laugh. You heard when they gasped, when you had hoped they would gasp. You know, in other words, you saw where it worked, and and in some cases where it didn't work. Uh, and you get that in the theatre more as a director, but in the in the uh, film business, very few directors get that opportunity. 
And so uh, I feel very lucky to have had that experience. And in a way, it, is, it wrapped up the Wicker Man for me for a number of years. I'd really been there and done that and enjoyed it. This year, at the procession's end, as has already been proclaimed, a holy sacrifice will be offered up jointly to Nuada, our most sacred god of the sun, and to Avalanau, the beloved goddess of our orchards, in order that we may furnish them with renewed power to quicken the growth of our crops.